We're here at Posh, and today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional Japanese steamed egg custard dish. It's called a chawan mushi, and it's great to settle your tummy at the end of a dinner while still using cool seasonal ingredients. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some type of stock. If you're making a mushroom chawan mushi, you can use a mushroom stock. If you're making something with meat or chicken, you can use chicken stock or a beef stock, or you can use a fish stock if you're doing something seafood or shellfish based. Today we're going to do a very simple vegetable chawan mushi with a little fish stock and some fresh ginger. We're going to use some mirin, some sake, we're going to a little tamari soy. I have some stock that I've made with some beautiful sea bream that we have, some mirepoix vegetables, a little pickled ginger for sweetness, and then you're going to need two whole eggs. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically make a real simple base. And then we're going to do that. We're going to do that over the stove. We'll make it season the base real strongly. And then we'll go ahead and we have to slowly cook and gently poach in a water bath, the chow on mushi. So we're going to go over to the stove and we're going to take our ingredients and start the base. All right, we're, we get the stove. We're going to start with a little bit of pure sesame oil in the bottom of the pan. The pan's just on low to maybe barely medium heat. We're going to go ahead and add our mirepoix. We're just going to take that. We don't really want a lot of noise. We're not trying to saute. We are sweating. Just like you run a couple miles, we're going to sweat. So on low heat, we're just going to allow that to slowly start to render its moisture and its liquid. And to that, we are going to add an eighth of a cup of mirin. We're going to add a half of a cup of sake. And then we're going to add about a tablespoon of this vinegar that our pickled ginger is pickled in. And we're going to bring that up to a simmer. Again, allowing all those wonderful ingredients to meld together, the mirepoix to leach out their beautiful juices. Now to that, while that's all simmering, we're going to add a cup of our beautiful bream stock here. And we're gonna bring that up to a simmer and add probably about one to two tablespoons of soy. Again, we're using tamari, which is gluten-free, so that we can share it with our friends who can't eat wheat. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer real gently. Once we've got that up to a simmer and heated up well, we're going to take it off the heat. Excellent. Now we're back to our cutting board. And we're going to start with two whole eggs. Whole. Don't break them wrong. We're going to crack a whole egg right into your mixing bowl. Same thing. Egg number two. Make sure you don't have any shells. You're a professional like I am. No shells. And we're going to give those a little teeny pinch of salt. Then we're going to go ahead and take this beautiful cooking liquid that we've made here. Whisk our eggs just a teeny little bit. Set a strainer over the top very slowly. Make a liaison by adding some stock, stirring it into our eggs, and adding more stock, and stirring it into our eggs. Mm, very good. That way we don't scramble or curdle our eggs while we're trying to make the custard base. Finally, once we've tempered it enough, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the stock and reserve our vegetables. Now we have our chawan mushi base. So what we need to do first, before we cook it, is we need to make sure that it's seasoned properly. And yes, I'm having something with barely cooked eggs in it. That's okay. I'm gonna add a little teeny bit more salt to this. Stir. I will check my seasoning one more time. I'm very happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take some of my reserved vegetables, and drop them in the bottom of my custard cups. Now, if you want, you can add shrimp or any kind of meat, and this is right now is when you would do that as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and pour the chow mushi base three quarters of the way up my custard cups. And then very carefully, you're going to want to take some plastic wrap and cut yourself off little bits of plastic wrap so you can cover very tightly. Make a huge mess if you can, and then just have other people clean it up for you. So we're going to make sure we have a nice tight wrap on those custard cups. 
And then we're gonna make our way back over to the stove where we have a simmering water bath ready to go. All right, now we're gonna take our containers here, our little custard cups, and we're gonna add them to a water bath that's brought up to a simmer. Make sure that the water comes up to the level of the custard in the custard cups, but not over the top. We don't want to simmer and splash water in our custard. So we're gonna add just a little more water to our simmer here. And then we're gonna adjust the temperature so that it's just at that nice light simmer, about 168, 172 degrees right around there. And we're gonna let that cook for about eight to 10 minutes. It depends on the size of your custard cups. It might take a hair longer, it might take a hair shorter. But when we're done, we're gonna have one of the silkiest foods you can imagine. Chawanushi, as we like to call it, is done. All we have to do is take it out of the bath. Be careful. Go ahead, grab your favorite spoon, and dive in. As they say in Japan, itadakimasu. Yum. That's heaven.